Yeah. All right, I got the thumbs up. Thank you and welcome. As you can see, our bulletin is a little bit different today. We're making some changes because your energy is helping us to develop our flow of the service away from a traditional bulletin and a way to reflect the direction of our own individual spiritual paths. We're not Buddhists, but we embrace the principles of Buddhism. We are not Christianity, but we embrace the concept of Christ consciousness. We are not a unity church, but we embrace the principles of unity. We are not a center for spiritual living, but we embrace the principles of CSL. We are not Native American, but we embrace the principles that the divine expresses itself through nature. We are CUL, the center of universal life, where all truth coexists in the body of the great spirit, the one who has sent us, the creator of all that is. This is who we are. Now I'd like to lead us into a meditation by reading from Peace in the Midst, the Interfaith Prayers for Peace, published by Unity Church. And I'd like to read the Buddhism message. So get comfy, close your eyes. as we get ready to enter into the silence of the divine. <laughs> Evoking the presence of great compassion, let us fill our hearts with our own compassion towards ourselves and towards all living beings. Let us pray that all living beings realize that they are all brothers and sisters, all nourished from the same source of light. May I be a guard for those who need protection, a guide for those on the path, a boat, a raft, a bridge for those who wish to cross the flood. May I be a lamp in the darkness, a resting place for the weary, a healing medicine for all who are sick, a vessel of plenty, a tree of miracles, and for the boundless multitudes of living beings, may I bring sustenance and awakening, enduring like the earth and sky, until all beings of, are freed from sorrow and all are awakened.
I was presented with here is a mini peace pole. Oh. May peace prevail on earth. And here in the languages of Navajo, Hopi, Sioux, Cherokee, oh, Seminole, oh. and Irish. <laughs> We have the Celtic Indian Peace Bowl. Paul, oh, stand up. Paul, oh, what's your last name? What's your last name, Paul? Daniel. Daniel. Paul Daniel made this, and he makes the big ones, too. Oh, my God. Big, give him a big round of applause. Paul, oh, well, uh, he was asking me for the, uh, the Paiute words for May Peace Prevail on Earth. And I failed to get those words, although I made several calls to the reservations up in southern Utah. And I even looked through the uh, Paiute Dictionary, but I didn't find a word for peace or earth. So, go figure. <laughs> but I'll keep trying. Because here's the Navajo, and the first word is a hush, just snark. <laughs> Think something like that. <laughs> so it will be have its place here with Mother Earth. Oh, nice. Oh boy. It's been an exhausting two weeks for me back here in Cottonwood, I gotta tell you. And I have two weeks of my battle with depression. So I'm feeling better today. In fact, the concert on Friday was a big boost. To my <laughs> Kimberly and Kalia. So uh, I want to thank everybody that attended and supported the concert, in including Rabbi Bernie and Wendy and their son Ashton, who are here today too. We, we thank you for joining us again. Our pleasure. Before I go deeper into my experiences, of the weekend, last weekend in Prescott with the New Warrior Training Adventure. I'd just like to recap the last three amazing weeks here at CUL with our guest speakers, three amazing, powerful women. And we have already spoke about uh, Reverend Renee Morgan Brooks coming back. And is there any doubt in your mind that she walks in the presence and the power of the Creator? No. No. And her love of self and community is evident in the humor that she brings to her message of oneness. Her three affirmations, her three main points were the af affirm, acknowledge, and align. Affirm daily that you are a spiritual being, having a human experience, and that the divine is part of you that it is all of you. That it does dwell inside you and that you are ready to receive the inspiration of the divine at any moment. And then acknowledge was the second word. Acknowledge. See the divine made manifest. See the divine in everything, every person, every creature, every thought, every action, every emotion, and love whatever you perceive that is made manifest because it is all of the divine. And then the third one was align. Align with that in us that is the divine itself. And remember that we were never unworthy. We were all born worthy. And to quote, Reverend Renee, but all that stuff that they made us believe about ourselves is where we're moving away from the self concept and we're moving towards self realization. Then, October 1st, the next Sunday, Kalia, who's here with us again this morning, thank you for being here. Her beautiful music and her message about the new earth. This idea, this message is all so central to what CUL believes is our distant shore. This is where our hopes and dreams lie. 
This is the holistic world vision that we are creating as spiritual warriors from the inside out. Quoting Thalia, we are at the precipice of a quantum leap, a quantum universal leap in our evolution. And as a species, and our evolution as spiritual beings, unquote. If you're here today, if you've been coming to see you well on a regular basis, then you already know this. And that you want to be a part of this shift. You want to change whatever you can to bring the balance back into your life. The balance of the male and the female energy, which we all possess within our energy bubble. And we are shifting our thinking from a sense of preservation for ourselves to a preservation of all living species on planet Earth. We heard Kalia talk about how the electromagnetic frequency of the Earth is, has increased substantially and will continue to increase, and how this effect is bringing up all the pain and fear in our subconscious minds. Our shadow is coming up at a very fast rate to be felt, acknowledged, and loved. We are leaving the old paradigm behind and entering a higher spiritual dimension that is based on love, cooperation, and service to others. We are creating this beautiful, magnificent planet, the Garden of Eden, from our visions and dreams of and our beliefs that we are gods because we share the same essence as the creator of all that is. We dream the new earth into being. Each one of us here on planet earth gets to choose love or fear. What will you choose? Here at CUL, we choose love. Then last week, Reverend Cheryl Gander Spagnolo echoed that choice again as she talked about becoming empowered through love. What every emotion we're using when we think about something, we're empowering that thought with that emotion. Think about that. We can change that. We are connected by energy to everything in the universe, and there is an impossibility of disconnecting to anything. In other words, it's impossible for us to disconnect. We are connected to everything in the universe. We are everything. She talked about how we came from pure energy into the amusement park of Earth, <laughs> where we alternately take a scary ride to the merry-go-round which is peaceful but boring. <laughs> Empowerment comes from knowing you're connected to everything. Think about that. Close your eyes and imagine you're connected to everything. Whatever your imagination comes up with to, to make that come into beingness. You're connected to everything, and your empowerment is pulling energy of the everything into your being. The elements are connected to each other, and the universe too, and we can come to an understanding and speak their language by communing with nature. A similar message that I gave back in May when I said, the elements are not our enemies, they are our allies. Remember the story she told about her youngest son being in an auto accident? <coughs> she said his soul was calling it to him. What did she do? She sat in love for her son. We cannot take a person's soul journey away from them. But we can shift something for them through love, connection, and respect. Through our connection in our prayer this morning, we connected to the people of California 
and to what they're going through, to the fires that are nature's way. We may not understand nature's way, but we know it is of the divine. The key word was conscious empowerment. We are empowered. We cannot be anything else because we are part of the divine. We are energy beings, spiritual beings having a human experience right now. She echoed what I said, that no angels, no savior, no spiritual guide is going to save us. We are empowered by the energy we live in to save ourselves and master our being. In the end, there is really no other reason for being here. We're creating this world, not them, or them, or them, whoever them are out there. <coughs> we are creating this world. We are creating it through our lens of focus, of attention, of awareness. We've been here before, created a life. Now we're back again creating a new life in a different way. We are an energy being that is consciously empowered. This brings us up to my men's weekend with a new warrior training adventure. A couple of things that if something I say resonates with you, or if I mirror you, show me. Or if you hear what I say, and you get it, say, aho. Mankind Project, be the man you want to be, the new warrior training adventure. They have a, uh, for you that don't know about this, it echoes what has been taking place for thousands of years throughout, throughout tribal societies around the world, until just recently, within maybe the last three, four, five hundred years. What I'm talking about is the initiation from boyhood to manhood, from a girl to a woman. These kind of ceremonies took place regularly, but no more. None of us have been through, or we're trained, we're taught by our parents to take this initiation, but maybe Ashton is different, because I know he had a, trans, uh, a transition to bar mitzvah, right? Okay. They do this for boys. I encourage you to maybe do Try this one too. <laughs> because you're at the age of this whole transition. You're, you're 14 now, right? 14 is a magic year in our lives. It's the year we begin our hero's journey. We don't even know it at the time. But something in our 14th year triggers our path in life for the rest of our life. Mine was moving from Salt Lake City to Scottsdale, Arizona when I was 14, in the middle of the school year. I was a ninth grader in Salt Lake City and I became a freshman in Scottsdale. I went from knowing nobody that wasn't a Mormon to discovering that there was other religions, <laughs> that there was other philosophies, that there was other races. That's how sheltered I was. That's what changed my life. That's what started my awakening. <coughs> my original intent when I, when I signed up for this weekend, the new warrior training adventure, was that I wanted to learn some new skills to make my life more successful and in turn, make CUL more successful. 
But as Saturday began with our circle, when there was 20, 23 of the 24, we started with 24 and somehow we lost a man. We got down to 23. We sat in our circle, we did our check-in. Now check-in is where we each go around, we say our name and our animal name. And we say what we're feeling in the moment. What we're checking in with that moment. As I was finishing up my check-in, I mentioned the word safety. I think I might have said, I'm grateful for the safe environment for men to do their work. But before I could finish the sentence, when I hit the word safety, I burst into sorrow and spontaneous tears. Poured out of me. Later on a break, I was sitting there contemplating, thinking about this. It was a strange thing. The word safety did this to me. And again, when I thought the word safety, the same thing happened. I burst into tears again. I began sobbing. So, I began to piece it together. That my first memory in life revolved around the issue of safety. And that my original wound was born into me, into my life, when I was one years old. It wasn't, it still is the wound of my life. It's not a safe place to be. My, that life is not a safe place to be. That's the wound. That's my first shadow. I've had this wound, this shadow, for 64 of my 65 years of life. It was caused by a traumatic and life-altering beating. It was inflicted on me by the one who is supposed to protect me. The one that is supposed to love me. The one that I was going to to share my goodness, my joy, and my love of life. It was ripped away from me and replaced with terror and uncertainty. That person was my mother. I was a toddler in diapers. I just learned to walk. On that day, I was using my legs to explore our house in Salt Lake City. For the first time, I was walking. Of course, now that I could walk, I could move a lot faster and I could go a lot further than I could when I was crawling. My mom had left me alone in the living room that morning, and eventually I decided to go and find her. I started down the long hallway, past the bedrooms. And I reached the corner and turned the corner and headed straight to the kitchen where my mommy was cooking. Midway between me and my mommy was a, a door wide open. It was the basement door. But to me, it was just a big black hole in my universe. I momentarily paused to stare at this blackness before continuing my journey to show my mommy what a good boy I was and how far I'd come to find her. When suddenly I heard a shriek, I turned to see a monster, I mean my mother, <laughs> charging at me with a big wooden spoon. In sheer terror and panic, I turned and ran as fast as my little legs would carry me down the hallway, but I was grabbed and beaten with a wooden spoon all the way down the hallway, back to the living room where I was left crying, confused, shocked, and horrified. That was the day that a deep fear was born. But it didn't end there. Over my childhood, the scenario would be repeated by both of my parents with frequent beatings of me, my brothers and sister. If it wasn't me being hit with a belt or a broomstick, it was me having to witness the others getting their treatment. And that was just as damaging. So how did all this play out in my adult life? Anger, 
That's how it played out. My anger kept me going. Kept me from giving up. Kept me from killing myself. I didn't make friends easily because I couldn't trust people. And I found that they usually let me down anyway, so I was always on guard. Well, back to the weekend warrior. The warrior weekend. The greatest tool that I came away with was the finding of a vision and mission statement for my life. And the vision and mission statement come from knowing my shadow, knowing my deepest wound. And my vision and mission statement is this. As a man among men, I am called to greatness. My mission statement is I create a world of safety for children and adults by creating space and expanding into the depth of love that awaits them. <coughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. Sometimes I wonder if I'm not the right person to lead this ministry. Because what I don't want you to know is that I have PTSD. And I've had it my whole life. With a host of other frailties. I'm damaged. I'm a wounded human being. But knowing all this allows me to see the deeper story playing out. It allows me to embrace rather than being a slave to reaction. The direction I choose now is by choice, not by reaction. It's now a conscious decision to feed that wolf that brings me joy, not fear, that opens to love, not closing to shame. So I ask you in this moment, what wolf will you feed? The one that keeps you stuck in the old stories or the one that has you leaning into the future by being with the present moment. On my way to the MKP weekend, I saw a small church on the hill. And the thought occurred to me, I wonder how it works there. How do they make decisions? Are they sustainable? It must feel pretty special to have a real church. Then the thought of CUL came to me. The uni minister is gone. I was offered an opportunity to lead. I accepted. Kim and I made a commitment to you, the congregation. It was a whirlwind based on a deeper knowing that this is where we were being called to serve. What hit me was that the congregation didn't make a commitment. They didn't make a commitment to us to support us. It was kind of an eye-opening experience. It feels really vulnerable to think that You need to support us, me and Kimberly. I've always believed that I could do this all by myself. The musician, the Indian, the businessman, the marketer. I found myself floundering because I did not know how to ask for help. Then this came to me. It's in our bulletin. <coughs> right here. It came to me when I read this book. You remember when I was given this book? Judaism's Ten Best Ideas. I 
read this book and I came across this, this chapter. <laughs> Halakha. Is that how you pronounce it? Halakha. 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 Walking the path, a community of doers. When I read this, I said, Kimberly, we're a Jewish community. Who <laughs> 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 Halakha. 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 We are a community made up more around what you do than what you believe. This leaves a lot of room for a variety of belief within the CUL community. There is, of course, a tension between love of tradition, what you're familiar with, and the pursuit of one's own spiritual path. But this allows us the freedom we need in order to open our hearts and express that which lies within. That's the freedom Nanda talked about that we are giving you. CUL is a gathering of doers where an active commitment and participation will be defined by the deeds. Being the leader of the center is incredibly stressful at times. The thoughts run through me of maybe I'm not the right person. To run it. Maybe my role as founder is just to start it. Maybe I should stick to what I do best, play the violin. Maybe someone else that is truly an enlightened person who, has, who is healed can step into this community and lead the congregation to the new world. Would it be a man or a woman? Is it you? Today is the best day, the worst day, and the hardest day of my life. And that can show up at any given moment. Can I have an aho? Oh. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. This is how I choose to, how I choose to receive it is what defines who I am. I love you all. I hold myself in service. All of you. Thank you. I'm Reverend Arvel Bird. Speeding a little fast. <laughs> I'd like to lead us into another meditation. But I'm going to say the prayer with the violin. I call this piece of music. Journey in time. It's really about my soul's journey in time. It's about your soul's journey in time. Think about that as we enter the silence.
बिहार